मुझे Again, this is Philip Steiger at thebest3d.com with another session of uh, the Daily Dose with Petey Howler. Um, I actually tried this this morning. It's kind of embarrassing. Um, I forgot to turn the switch on on my microphone. <coughs> And 20 minutes later, oh, no sound. Uh, I guess I should try that after my first cup of coffee. Anyway, um, here we go again. What I want to do here is, first of all, show you some nice artwork that my daughter created. Uh, she carved this pumpkin. last um, Halloween um, and so here it is now one thing I'd like to do is uh, on this episode is show you a couple of ways to choose colors um, you know you may have uh, perhaps a project where you need to paint with just a few colors uh, or, or whatever the quantity the number of colors is it's a, a very specific type of colors maybe different shades of red or oranges and so on so you could use these color swatches that you have here but uh, many times it's uh, perhaps more convenient if you can define your own colors and uh, there's many ways to do that so one that we actually saw the other day is uh, you can store an image um, as you remember and in fact you can import it straight to a stored image so when you do that uh, you essentially navigate to your images maybe we'll pick uh, let's pick this one here today and uh, it, it doesn't get loaded into the main buffer it gets loaded into a stored memory place location uh, and a few seconds later you'll have it here as a stored image now when you do that you can turn this into your color palette simply by clicking down here in the lower left corner and that turns it into a color picker notice when I, I use it as I'm dragging around here the colors on the right side here the uh, RGB values go crazy and change accordingly so I can pick a dark color right from this image and paint with it and I can pick a light color and paint with that and perhaps the reddish colors and so on I can also use the right button in here and choose to change the right color the secondary color and I can paint with that as well with the right button so you have really two colors available some of them you would use uh, sometimes you would use it for erasing and uh, of course on the tool panel down here there's an erase tool when you right click on that you can in fact select perhaps to erase only a portion of the image like a selection But by default everything is, sele is selected so it will erase everything here too but if you click here and you are not in <coughs> color pick mode it will put that image back in there um, there's other ways to use it also you can go uh, right click here on the functions and say for instance you only want to add or, or use the red as a grayscale or whatnot I mean there's tons of different ways to use this stored image um, but of course we are looking for ways to make it a color panel so the color palette is one there's another way also let's say you have an image in a favorite uh, imaging program or like an image viewer like Irfan view I highly recommend Irfan view it's an awesome companion um, one thing you might want to do for instance is quickly do a shift U to uh, enhance the colors perhaps uh, add some other filters to it and so on and let's do one more thing which is to resize it half the size uh, at Mitchell there you go and let's say I want to again load this as a picture into a stored image but I don't want to save it I don't want to to waste any time to do that so I'll use Control C to copy that or edit copy and once you've copied that into the uh, clipboard what you can do is uh, straight to the image and look for the clipboard and again store uh, uh, paste it as a stored image there it is right and so again you now have this image available and you can either click it right there and that should put it right in there probably we have a selection mask that prevents any updating nope that was not it something else anyway we can go and pick the colors from there as well and paint with these now okay whatever the color was uh, I mean normally it should and it will again someday <laughs> pick this up here oh there it is it's it's in the upper left corner it's a small image right this one here we resampled down to a fairly small dimension so it was actually hiding it was up there out of view out of sight um, so now in fact that brings me to another thing if, if I wanted to uh, use this image all over here and not just in the upper left corner because we have a very large image down here uh, I can also go here and say let's create a new image right replace the existing image by creating a new image that will cause this existing one to get lost and we have now 
this small image right there. All right, so we, we have one way here to create uh, color palettes, and there are many ways. Let's see a few others. Um, first of all, we have a couple of uh, options here. There's the color swatch, and there's just the color bar here, and, and there's a couple of different color selectors that we offer. Um, this one here, quite popular as well. Uh, so you just paint, you, you just grab and you know drag the cursor around here with the left button down, and then I'll choose the uh, the colors. You can right click to to select a different color, and then that will be your erase color there too. Um, let's see what else. Uh, oh yeah, this is highly saturated. You can bring it down to zero saturation or anywhere in between. So you can have something that's a little bit more grayish. Okay, and let's see what else. Uh, the color swatches down here. Um, these are individual colors and there's a couple to choose from. You can cycle through these different predefined color swatches. What's, what's kind of nice with these is that you can exchange them. You can move one to the other. You can swap them out even with the primary and secondary color. Not only can you swap these two, drag and drop the primary and secondary color, but you can also take this red one, for instance, and drop it over here. Or take this green one and bring it into the white. Take the black one, you know, whichever you want there you can you can swap them for and you should not get lo you should not lose them that way uh, but most importantly these color swatches can also be dragged into the gradient uh, the tool that we use to build the gradient it's actually called now the sweep there is a gradient editor as well and then the sweep editor that's the more traditional one we've had for a while so here you can actually take these color swatches and drop them right here on the lower bar and say for instance start with some reddish and then go with uh, an orange at this point here, and then bright yellow, and then suddenly turn green towards the end. Uh, and you can always move these away or around. Um, and there's also a variety of indices already defined, eight in per collection, and there are different collections of gradients available. So that's one place where you can use the color picker as well, is to bring that into the gradient. Um, and many more things we can do with that um, gradient generation tool. We'll, we'll get back to that uh, at some other uh, opportunity. Let's go back here though now. We have also the triangular selection tool. You've seen that perhaps in some other uh, programs like 3D programs. Quite often they use triangular selection tools and then there's this one here as well. All of these quite easy to understand and use. This one here is quite fabulous. This one is the mixer. And what the mixer lets you do is essentially define a color palette of your own as if you're holding this and you know pasting some pressing some ink out or some some color out of uh, out of an ink tube a paint tube um, and so what you can do by default is the color picker or turkey baster uh, and that chooses the colors you already have but if you go here and click this icon you're now paint in in the paint mode and so whatever colors you have in the primary color like here you can put a couple of dabs of those you can also pick a few others you can grab some more green and put that in there or some light yellow and put that in there and then smear it. So you got a nice little smearing effect to uh, create your own custom uh, uh, color palette. Uh, there's of course a, a bunch of different color palettes to choose from, different sizes at which you create those tabs. Uh, you can make it very, very messy here. Uh, different options, a uh, couple of other things there. Let's see, let's go back to the color picker. So we've chosen that. Uh, more options you can load existing um, color palettes right for instance a bunch of legacy mixer greens earth tones default mixer color palette and so on so there's there's quite a number of different uh, presets and you can just grab these colors from there or again you can go into paint mode and mess with that right? and also with the right button you can paint a couple of dabs of white that's the current erase color here the secondary color all right, so um, that's that. There's a few more options. Let's see where do we have it. Uh, oh, from the brush. If you have a, a picture in your custom brush, let's say, for instance, we grab, um, let's see here, with the custom brush selection tool, we grab this, and that's mostly orange and some light orange, almost pinkish and stuff. You see them right here in the preview. Well, you can build a, um, a color palette basically directly here from this, uh, from the picture that we have in the brush. And, and again, mix it and, and modify it there as well. You can undo that also to some extent. I think just one level of undo. Um, there are more options. Uh, you can find a couple of other tools, hexadecimal color picker, the system colors, red, green, yellow, blue swatches, all sorts of different 
And what I would like to do is simply stop at this time because we don't want to go over the 15 minutes, li lim 15 minutes limit that YouTube imposes. Uh, and uh, I, I just invite you to explore those and uh, find uh, find your way to uh, best way to create colors and 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 work with them because that is essential that you can easily uh you know find your way in creating the right color selections and to finish it what i'd like to do is just show you one here um i'll i'll be going with the custom brush from the custom brush so we have this initial layout here harry is going to help us and i'm going to go back to the color picker mode so we can pick the colors we want and I'm gonna go for a really bright one, perhaps this one here, and I'm just gonna paint it right there. Now, I, I don't want to use this custom brush that I currently have anymore, so I, I will be erasing this and don't need the selection anymore. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll grab a default brush uh, like the, the airbrush, okay, okay. But I will pick these colors that we have now in the color palette. So let's see, I'm gonna grab a little bit of this a little bit darker shade is here, a little bit here, and in fact, it's good to overlay them so you really see, because if you have some white in between, that might uh, throw you off. Um, let's see, there's a, a next stage over here, perhaps uh, this one here, and you see what I'm doing is essentially gathering a couple of colors that I want to use. There you go. Let's say I want to paint some desert scene in Arizona. Those are colors that you'll probably use, especially during a sandstorm. Um, so, you know, at that point, uh, what you could do is perhaps switch to a different brush like watercolors. Uh, let's say the drying, translucent or opaque. Let's take one of those. And I'll be drawing from the back to the front. So, um, right now it's drawing and I don't want that. I also don't want the paper texture. Let's go turn that off. Um, and what I want is essentially pick this color and then paint with it. Then pick another color and paint with that. And then pick, you know, go back and forth between those. There's a shortcut for that. And you can just use the comma. That's a shortcut you see in other programs too. So the comma, while you press and hold it, makes your cursor that's normally in drawing mode switch to the color picker. And you can now actually just work with the colors you already have here so that saves you the round trip back and forth which is really convenient when you work with a mouse with the tablet it's a little bit faster but still it's a great uh, great way to focus on on what you want to paint and rather than you know where do you get those colors from again so you can also then at that point minimize that so you get them, uh, a little bit more real estate especially if you're on a netbook or some other low resolution screen and so remember the comma and let's go pick this and uh, i will just paint that in the background and a few more and then I'm gonna go with this color comma and pick that color up and then comma again this one here and so on so you see you can quite easily work with your own colors there that way and on top of that it creates a nice this is kind of a nice trick here it basically creates a reference of all the colors that you're actually using uh, you know you don't have to save those colors in a separate place. Um, if you save this as a uh, lossless image like a PNG or a TIFF, the RGB values of these pixels do represent the colors that you actually want to work with. So even a year later, if you load this image, even in another program, it's a great way to actually keep the colors right in there and find your way to the same colors in the other programs. All right, uh, that's it for today. We'll uh, get back to another daily dose with uh, PD Howler and uh, hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.